Okay, this video is called uh, Introduction to Systems of Linear Equations, but before I do a system, I'm sorry, Systems of Linear Inequalities, but before I do a system of linear inequalities, let's just review how to graph a linear inequality. So I'm going to do two problems where I'm simply graphing a linear inequality. This one right here has a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 2, so that's like negative 2 over 1. So I'm going to, going to go down 2 and right 1, and that's where my slope is. I'm going to put a few more points down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, a couple of them up here just to make it easier. And then I'm going to ask myself, what kind of line do I need to draw here, a dashed line or a solid line? Well, because this is just a less than, not less than or equal to, I need a dashed line. And you can think of it this way. If it was or equal to, equals, y equals negative 2x plus 1 would give you a solid line doesn't have equals, so we don't need a solid line. We're just going to do a dashed line down through here. And then I have to decide which direction to shade, because either the points over here on this side of the dashed line make the statement true, or all the points on this side of the dashed line make it true. So let's just figure out which side it goes on, and the easiest way to do that is to test some point that you select. doesn't matter what point, but I like to test the point 0, 0. If I can put a 0 in for x and a 0 in for y, and it makes the statement true, then I know I should be shading toward that point. If it doesn't make it true, I, I shouldn't be shading toward that point. So, let's see. If I put 0 in for y, I get 0 on the left side. If I put 0 in for x, I get 0 plus 1, which is 1 on the right side. Then is it true that 0 is less than 1? Yes. So, this point right here is making it true, so everything on, or every point on this side will make it true. Okay, let's do another one. This one is uh, uh, in standard form, and so I think I'll use my, um, my handy uh, trick for graphing these. If I put a 0 in for x, then negative 5y would equal 15, so y would have to be negative 3. If I put a 0 in for y, negative 6 would have to equal 15, and so 15 divided by, I'm sorry, positive 6 would have to equal 15, and 15 divided by 6 is 2.5. So I'll just put a point right here at 2.5. And, okay. and so I've got two points there. Many people would look at this and say, well, why don't we just solve it for y? And that's fine too. I'll just do that quickly. If I solve it for y, I would be subtracting 6x from each side first. I'd get negative 5y is less than or equal to, and instead of writing, uh, well, I can't write 9x because they're not like terms, and instead of writing 15 minus 6x, I'll write negative 6x plus 15. Now, when I divide by 5 to get the y by itself, since I divided by a negative number, I'm sorry, since I divided by negative 5, when I'm divided by a negative number, I have to flip the sign around. Remember that, don't forget, if you divide or multiply an inequality by a negative number, you have to flip the sign around. So negative 6 divided by negative 5 is actually positive 6 fifths x, and then, of course, positive 15 divided by negative 5 is negative 3. So now I, I could also graph it this way. I could say, well, it starts at negative 3, goes up 6, and right 5, and we'd actually get the same line we had before. Up 6, right 5. That looks better. And then we also have to ask, what kind of line do I need? Well, this is less than or equal to, and because it says or equal to, then we need a solid line. Some people remember my saying, if it takes more ink to make the sign, it takes more ink to make the line. Now, the last thing I have to do is test and see which direction will I shade it. Will I shade down here or up here? And so I'll test this point right here and just see if it works. If it does, I'll shade that way. If it doesn't, I won't shade that way. So if I put 0 in for x and 0 in for y, I get 0 minus 0 is less than or equal to 15. Well, that's true. 0 is less than 15. So this point's making it true, so I'll shade all the points on this side of that line. Okay. So I'm finished with that one. Now let's take a look at, at one where our job now is to graph a system of inequalities. And it turns out this isn't as bad as you might think. We're simply going to graph both of them. The only difference is, after we get done shading, the actual answer is only the part where both of them would be shaded. And okay, we'll demonstrate that here. 
So the first one, I'm going to do that one in blue, it crosses the y-axis at negative 1, has a slope of negative 1 half, so it goes down 1 and right 2. And I'll put a few more points in there that meet that criteria. And then I need to ask myself, what kind of line do I need, solid or dashed? Well, it's just greater than, not greater than or equal to, so dashed line. And then, which direction will I shade it? If I put 0 in for x and 0 in for y, I get the statement 0 is greater than 0 minus 1. Well, is that true? Sure. 0 minus 1 is negative 1, and 0 is greater than that. So this point is making its, the, the statement true, so we'll shade this side of the dashed line. Let's do the second one in red. It crosses up here at 3. It has a slope of negative 5 halves, so we'll go down 5 and right 2. And then we'll need a solid, one, solid line on that because it's less than or equal to. So here's a solid line through there. And then which way will I shade that one? If I put 0 in for x and 0 in for y, I get 0 is less than or equal to 0 plus 3. Well, that's true. So I'll be shading that one to the left of the line. Okay. This is looking kind of messy here. What I'm really looking for, though, is where do I see the region, or where's the region where both of them are shaded? Well, it's right in here where both of them are shaded, and so I'll shade that one in black. Okay. Now, that's really pretty sloppy looking, and so I'll show you on the next one a, uh, a faster way to, to uh, make this work. Okay. Not faster necessarily, but it won't be as messy looking. So let's look at this one here. I can tell that the first one crosses at negative 2. It has a slope of negative 4, which is, of course, negative 4 over 1. And that would take me off the graph here, so I'll go up 4 and left 1, and that's the same line. And then I hope you're seeing now that you need a solid line because that's less than or equal to, not just less than. And so we'll draw a solid line right through there. And let's ask the question, which way do I shade it now? If I put 0 in for x and 0 in for y, like I've done before, I'm testing this point here. 0 is greater than or equal to 0 minus 2. Well, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. I'm sorry, that's less than. And is it true that 0 is less than or equal to negative 2? No, it's not. So this point is not making it true, so I won't shade that, that way. I'll shade the other way. But instead of drawing a bunch of shading over here, I'm simply going to make a little arrow that indicates the direction I will be shading later. Okay? So instead of doing the whole shading, I'm just making an arrow to tell myself that's where I'll shade the blue line. Let's do the next one in red. It crosses at positive 3. It has a slope of 1, which of course is 1 over 1. So we'll just go up 1, right 1. And we'll do that a couple times so we can see where the line goes. And then we'll decide what kind of line we need. It's just less than, so we need a dashed line, not a solid line. So here we go, with a dashed line. Okay. And which way will I shade that? Well, if I put 0 in for y and 0 in for x, I get 0 is less than 3. Is that true? Yes. Okay. So I'll, I should be shading toward this point, 0, 0. So that's the direction I'll shade the red one. So where is it that I'll be shading both of them? Well, the blue one is shaded all over here. The red one's shaded all down here. The place where both of them are shaded is right in this region right in there. So I will do some shading in there. And there's my solution, and it's not quite so sloppy as the other ones.